John Daniels. We're here at opening night of the ever brilliant Marco Ramirez's uh, The Royale, um, which is happening tonight. It is. I'm Marco Ramirez, author of The, the, uh, the Royale. Uh, I'll let him call things ever brilliant. <laughs> um, so uh, let's talk about the fact that uh, you've written like three plays your entire life mm -hmm. and they're all smash hits. Aww. Why don't why don't you write more? Um, uh, I, I've been keeping busy in the TV world, and that's been keeping me busy. But um, has it been? Only, I've only really written t so even truly two full length plays, um, and Royale is uh, is kind of the, the one that's gotten the most uh, productions. Um, what's the question? And why am I writing? Why aren't you writing more? I just like they, like, like they go so well. Everybody does them. They play. You know. Yeah. So this show for for people mm -hmm. at home that don't know, right? You won best new play in New York, London, Boston, and LA. Every other playwright I know, uh -huh. if they won Best New Play in all those cities, would write uh, a, like 11 follow-up plays. Yeah, instead I wrote 11 uh, follow-up uh, episodes of comic book television. Oh, okay, um, that's true. No, that's yeah, true. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, it's really, playwriting is really hard for me because I really, I, I prob I'm probably too overprotective and I probably really overthink things um, and I want, uh, I think of them, I think of my, this sounds, whatever, I think of my plays as like kind of a curated night, like a party, like if I was planning a party, um, what would I want it to feel like, what I want the, 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 the vibe to be, and so with the Royale, I spent a lot of time thinking about what is this show going to feel like from beginning to end, what is the set going to look like, what is, what is, the, what is the air in the, in the room going to smell like, um, and so once I finally found that vibe, I could, I could write the play and figure out what it was, and so I'm just... I don't know, I, I spent a lot of time walking around the car and kicking the tires on a new play. Um, and uh, with the Royale, was, was, there were many years of just me trying to make sure to get it right. Um, and so I'm just taking my time, man. And with television, you just crank it up. Just, here, here we go, yeah. What, what needs to happen? Who cares? Doesn't matter. <laughs> that's right. Sell some car commercial stuff. Go. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's a little more delicate because a TV episode, even though millions of people watch television, um, it's kind of on and then it's... It's over. If, if I'm lucky and I happen with the Royale, um, the play gets produced many times over several years. So this, I, actually, I did the math. I think this is the 30th production of the play. The 30th production? I think this is number 30. That's, that's amazing. Which, which I could have never expected. Yeah, I'd like as a playwright, you're lucky if you get one. You're super lucky if you get two. Right. Um, three, like, hold the phone. <laughs> What's happening? Um, and so I'm really, really grateful that it's had this many. But I, I you know, I just try to, like, sharpen it as long as possible. That way it feels like throw it out there and it's good quality and then hopefully it's good quality and then you don't have to write another one for a while. <laughs> right. Um, did you, when it's been to other places, do you get people who think they're not going to like it because it's boxing and then realize it's so much more? 100%. Yeah, I get both sides. So I get a lot of people coming up uh, and they're like, my husband didn't want to come to the play because he doesn't like the play. He doesn't like when I come to the theater, but I told him it was boxing and, uh, and he came and so I finally got him four on the flip side. Um, my friend was, thinks boxing is a brutal, horrible sport, and they didn't want to come see this show, but they were so taken by the performances or something. So it's weirdly, uh, it's, like a, it's like a switch hitter of a play. It's like, yeah, we've had people who leave and they're just like, my expectations were so low, but it was amazing. And you're always like, thank you? Yeah, thank you so much. What, right? what where, where did we go? They're like, you, Marco, like, oh God, my expectations like, could not have been lower. Yeah, I think they just all thought it was gonna be rocky. Yeah, you know which, that, it, that it was gonna be like you're gonna watch people like faux theatrical box on stage. Yeah, and I mean it, it is a little bit like the sugar on the medicine makes the whatever go down. Is it, it, there is a little like oh it's about boxing? Really, it's not about boxing. It's there is a lot of boxing in it. It's about boxers. Um, it's about a boxing match, but it's about a boxing match. It's not at all about boxing. It's about a boxing right. match. It was actually about really loaded racial dynamics. This sporting event is often not about the actual sporting event. Right. Um, People who root for the Yankees, who root for the Red Sox, who root for whoever. LeBron James and, and the Cavaliers, now LeBron James and the Lakers. Like, there's so much history and the reason people are fans of the New England Patriots are very different than the reason people are fans of the Jets. Right. And uh, so the same reason that I would, I would argue sports are not ever really about sports. Right. It's about the narrative of, of the people at the center of them, which is why when it comes time to the Olympics, they spend more time talking about the gymnasts grandparents than they do actually showing yeah, you know, we fall in love with all of them make sure right? you fall in love with them because that's that's why we care about sports